Hello, welcome to E Teachers 365, where education and culture meet. My name is Elaine Johnson, wife, mother, educator, and master storyteller. Today I'm going to read with you Flossie and the Fox by Patricia McKissack and illustrated by Rachel Isadora. It's one of my favorite stories to share from pre-K to about fifth grade. Everyone loves this story. Uh, what's interesting about this story is that there's a dialect that the author uses because the story was passed down to her from her father and her grandfather. Flossie! The sound of Big Mama's voice floated past the cabins and Sophie's quarters, round the smokehouse, beyond the chicken coop, all the way down to Flossie Finley. Flossie tucked away her straw doll in a hollow log, then turned to answer her grandmother's call. Here I am, big mama, Flossie said after catching her breath. It was hot, hotter than a usual Tennessee August day. Big mama stopped sorting peaches and wiped her hands and face with her apron. Take these to Miss Viola over at the McClutchin place. She said, reaching behind her and handing Flossie a basket of fresh eggs. Seemed like they'd been troubled by a fox. Miss Viola's chickens be so scared, they can't even now lay a stone. Big Mama clicked her teeth and shook her head. Why come Mr. J.W. can't catch the fox with his dogs? Flossie asked, putting a peach in her apron pocket to eat later. Every time they corner that old slickster, he gets away. I tell you, that fox is one sly critter. How do a fox look? Flossie asked. I just remember ever seeing one. Big Mom had to think a bit. Child, a fox be just a fox. But one thing for sure, that rascal loves eggs. He'll do most anything to get at some eggs. Flossie tucked the basket under her arm and started on her way. Don't tarry now, Big Mama called, and be particular about them eggs. Yes, um, Flossie answered. The way through the woods was shorter and cooler than the road route under the open sun. What if I come upon a fox, thought Flossie. Oh, well, a fox be just a fox. That ain't so scary. Flossie commenced to skip along. When she come upon a critter, she couldn't recollect ever seeing. Hmm. He was sitting inside the road like he was expecting somebody. Flossie skipped right up to him and nodded a greeting the way she'd been taught to do. Top of the morning to you, little missy, the critter replied. And what is your name? I be Flossie Finley, she answered with a proper curtsy. I reckon I don't know who you are either. Slowly the animal circled around Flossie. I am a fox, he announced all the time, eyeing the basket of eggs. He stopped in front of Flossie, smiled as best a fox can, and bowed at your service. Flossie rocked back and forth on her heels, on her toes, back and forward, back and forward, carefully studying the creature who was claiming to be a fox. Nope, she said at last. I just purely don't believe it. You don't believe what? Fox asked, looking away from the basket of eggs for the first time. I don't believe you're a fox. That's what. Fox's eyes flashed anger. Then he chuckled softly. <laughs> My dear child, he said, sounding right disgusted. Of course I'm a fox. A little girl like you should be simply terrified of me. Whatever do they teach children these days? Flossie tossed her head in the air. Well, whatever you are, you sure think a whole heap of yourself, she said, and skipped away. Fox looked shocked. Wait, he called. You mean you're not fighting? Not just a bit? Flossie stopped, then she turned and said, I ain't never seen a fox before, so why should I be scared of you? And I don't even know you're a real fox for a fact. Fox pulled himself tall. <clears throat> he cleared his throat. 
Are you saying I must offer proof that I am a fox before you will be frightened of me? That's just what I'm saying. Little Flossie skipped on through the piney woods while that fox fellow rushed away looking for whatever he needed to prove he was really who he said he was. Meanwhile, Flossie stopped to rest beside a tree. Suddenly, Fox was beside her. I have the proof, he said. See, I have thick, luxurious fur. Feel for yourself. Fox leaned over for Flossie to rub his back. Um, feels like rabbit fur to me, she said to Fox. <laughs> Shucks, you ain't no fox. You a rabbit all the time trying to fool me. <coughs> me? A rabbit, he shouted. I have you know, my reputation precedes me. I am a third generation of foxes who have outsmarted and outrun Mr. J. Devin McCutcheon's fine hunting dogs. I have raided some of the best hen houses from Franklin and Madison. Rabbit indeed, I am a fox, and you will act accordingly. Flossie hopped to her feet. She put her free hand on her hip and patted her foot. Unless you can show you a fox, I'll not accord you nothing. And without further ceremony, she skipped away. Down the road a piece, Flossie stopped by a bubbly spring. She knelt to get a drink of water. Fox came up to her and said, I have a long pointed nose. Now that should be proof enough. Don't prove a thing to me, Flossie picked some wildflowers. Come to think of it, she said, matter of fact, like, rats got long pointed noses. That's it. You're a rat trying to pass yourself off as a fox. That near about took Fox's breath away. I, I beg your pardon, he gasped. You can beg all you wanted, Flossie said, skipping on down the road. That still don't make you no fox. I'll teach you a thing or two, young lady, Fox called after her. You, you just wait and see. Before long, Flossie came to a clearing. A large orange tabby was sunning on a tree stump. Hi, pretty kitty, the girl said and rubbed the cat behind her ears. Meanwhile, Fox slipped from behind a clump of bushes. Since you won't believe me when I tell you I'm a fox, he said stiffly, perhaps you will believe that fine feline creature to whom you seem to have some measure of respect. Flossie looked at the cat and winked her eye. He sure use a whole heap of words, she whispered. Fox beckoned for Cat to speak up. Cat jumped to a nearby log, yawned in distress, and then she answered. This is a fox because he has sharp claws and yellow eyes, she purred. Fox seemed satisfied, but Flossie looked at Cat, and she looked at Fox, then one more at both, just to be sure. And then she said, all due respect, Miss Cat, but both y'all got sharp claws and yellow eyes, so that don't prove nothing, except y'all both cats. Fox went to howling and running around in circles. He was plumb beside himself. I'm a fox and I know it, he shouted. This is absurd. Well, no call for you to use that kind of language, Flossie said, and she skipped away. Wait, wait, Fox followed, pleading. I just remembered something. It may be the solution to this horrible situation. Good, it's about time. I have a bushy tail, Fox seemed to perk up. That's right, he said. All foxes are known for their fluffy, bushy tails. That has got to be adequate proof. Ain't gotta be. You got a bushy tail? So do squirrels. Flossie pointed to one overhead, leaping from branch to branch in the treetops. Here, have a bite of my peach, she said, offering Fox first bite of her treat. But Fox was crying like a natural born baby. No, 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 he sobbed. I'll promise you I'm a fox. Won't that do? And Flossie shook her head no. Oh, woe is me, Fox Holland. I may never, ever recover my confidence. Flossie didn't stop walking. That's just what I've been saying. You're just an old confidencer. Come telling me you was a fox and can't prove it. 
Shame on you. Long about that time, Flossie and the fox came out of the woods. Flossie cupped her hands over her eyes and caught sight of Mr. McCutcheon, Quarters, and Miss Viola's cabin. Fox didn't notice a thing. He just followed behind Flossie, begging to be believed. Give me one last chance, he pleaded. Flossie turned on her heels. Okay, but just this once more. Fox tried not to remember, but his voice was real unsteady like, I, I have sharp teeth and can run exceedingly fast. He waited for Flossie to say something. Slowly, the girl rocked from head to toe, back and forward. You know, she finally said, smiling. It don't make much difference what I think anymore. What? what? Fox asked, why? Because there's one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's hounds behind you. He's got sharp teeth and can run fast too. And by the way, the hound's looking, it's all over for you. With a quick glance back, Fox dashed towards the woods. The hound knows who I am, he shouted, but I'm not worried. I sure can outsmart and outrun one of Mr. J. W. McCutcheon's miserable mutts any old time of the day. Because like I told you, I am the fox. I know, said Flossie. I know. And she turned toward Miss Viola's with a basket of eggs safely tucked under her arm. So, why did I choose this story? I chose this story for a number of reasons. One, it's a great character. It's a cute story. Children love stories with animals in them. And I like that the little girl was able to outsmart the box. Also, I think it's important to recognize that in the beginning of the story, the author talks about how her father and grandfather passed this story down to her and that we use dialect. Sometimes stories can be told in different tones and from different regions. And I think it's important for us to talk to us about stories that are passed down. Again, sharing our stories with our children builds up their confidence. And also, eventually, they'll start reading these stories independently because they're so used to hearing the stories again and again. So please check out Flossie and a Fox. There are other wonderful stories added to this channel. And I always have pictures behind me and books in the background of stories that I'll be reading soon. So please like, follow, and subscribe. E-Teaches 365 for education and culture need. Thank you.